the things you have prepared, whose will they be? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 12, verses 3 to 21. Chapter 12, verses 13, 13 to 21. At that time, one of the multitudes said to Jesus, Teacher, bid my brother... Divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years, take your ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have said that today's theme is when possessions become obsessions. Two, say two Sundays. Yeah, I think two Sundays ago, we, we were talking about peace of mind and how what we have can rob us of our inner peace and peace generally. And I remember we said that many a times we are not able to live at peace because we are abundantly blessed. So the possessions that we have received remains and becomes the reason why we are fidgety, uncomfortable, and perpetually, perpetually, perpetually worried. On this 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time, 
the church enjoins us to remain focused on our quest for heaven. It is a call to live a Christ-centered life. We are urged to focus our attention on the heavenly realities more than the earthly shadows. Many a times, our worry is about the things that will come to an end and the things that uh, cannot help us, not even now, not even tomorrow, not even in eternity. Sometimes, by the way, we are even disturbed by what is uh, owned by him or by her. You see, to the extent that we even destroy each other because of material goods. Today, we are also reminded that we are in a transitory world. Hence, it is a call to make use of the things of this world prudently without losing our ultimate goal. It is only when we make heaven our goal that the full meaning of life would be revealed and realized. The first reading of this Sunday begins with a warning. Vanity, vanity. The preacher says vanity from the book of Ecclesiastes or the book of the preacher, or Kohereth. Vanity. Vanity. The preacher says vanity. If you look at our, at our bodies, some of us have bodies that the body and food have become good friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> that means that the body is good, somebody is quite okay, good. Others are still struggling with the food, but they are still there. <laughs> now, if you look at how beautiful our bodies are, and then when you have time, this is, not, this is not quite a good assignment, but when you have time, go to any of our mortuaries, especially the mortuaries where your bodies are not well taken care of. Go to city mortuary or many others in our provincial general hospitals. Sometimes, not always, and not all hospitals, is, I have said mortuaries where bodies are not well taken care of. You find bodies of human beings rotting. The one's beautiful body is now a composition of some smelly stuff. With the passage of time, everything is gone, only the bones remain. The bodies as we have them, even the body we have is also vanity. And that is why you and I know that at the resurrection of the dead, the bodies we have will not be of any use. And I have said this a million times. Yes, we will resurrect in our bodies, but not the bodies we have. The body that you have as it is currently constituted that body is only usable here, not anywhere else. So it is also good that uh, what God has given you, please don't use it as a weapon to fight others. If you feel that your body is so good, you are so handsome, you are so beautiful, tell God thank you. 
somebody else may not be as fine as you are. We've got so many of our brothers and sisters who are challenged physically. They can't have the physique as we would want to enjoy with. But they still are sons and daughters of God. The moment we will know how vanity it is with all the material wealth, we will only, as we have said, we will only learn to focus on things heavenly because they will last for times. It strikes a reality that most of us have neglected that reality, I mean that fact. However, one day, one day, each one of us will come to terms with it. Think of a person that you loved. I want to show you how things change. Let us say you had somebody called John, for example. A good friend, maybe even a brother, maybe your dad, maybe your husband, maybe a colleague. We give him the name John. Today, it is Sunday, the 31st. And we are with John, and we have sung together. And then, when we are parting after Mass, or after our service, each goes home. John goes home, James goes home, Peter goes home, a Jane goes home, Felicia goes home, Grace goes home, they all go home. Before the day ends, the same same day today, 31st, at 6, John dies. During the day when we were at Mass, John had a name. We were calling him John. Maybe we were even calling the father of so-and-so, or Mr. whatever. After the person dies, the same day, the same people, we start asking which vehicle will you take the body to the morgue. Now John has no name. John is the body now. Where do we take the body? The body, no name. So you can imagine that is how, that is how, that is how transitory our life is. That even the name you have, a day will come when we will not refer to you with your name. We will call you the body. We will call you the remains the vehicle carrying the remains of so and so. And all of a sudden, somebody was being hugged by everybody. Nobody wants to be in the vehicle where you are, only the driver. And maybe the most courageous. Think of it that when you died, you are not taken good care of. So your body is putrefying. And there is nothing as merry as a human body. If you didn't know, please know. Among the animals that produce false male after death, I am told, or so I read, that human beings are number one. We used to think that when a, a dog is dead, it is so smelly. Now I want to change your perception. So you can imagine, one minute, everybody is hugging you, calling you by the name. The other minute, you have no name, you are called the remains, you are smearing, everybody is running away. The same person. The same person. The same person. The same person. The moment we come into terms with that, we will ask ourselves, what is it that is important now, the preacher, in the first reading, 
calls us to remember God in all we do. We remember God in all we do. In our beauty, we remember God. In our strength, we remember God. In our achievement, we remember God. In all things, we remember God. He reminds us that there will be an ultimate end to all created things. He who reminds us that the ultimate goal here on earth is to walk our way straight to heaven. Not straight to where our, our possessions are. How many men and women who have died as a result of shock emanating from material wealth that maybe was stolen or vandalized? I know of a gentleman in this Republic of Kenya. The road, one of the highways, one of the super highways I think was passing near where he had some property. Those of you who know, in this country we have a special gift given only by the devil to sell land where there is no land. It's a special gift by some criminals in this country. You know for sure that this space is reserved for public utility or public use. And because maybe you are in the government offices, then you hoodwink some fellows, then they come and buy the same piece of lard. Tomorrow, the government is now constructing the road. And the road is going through where you have the plot. And you have all the papers. Shetani and Amajabu. You have all the papers. That gentleman, when he was told that the road is passing through where your investment is, that guy got struck. In a record of three months, he died. When he remembered how much he is losing, that is how attached we are. Attached. We are even so attached to ourselves. So much is happening to us. The second reading hits the nail on its head. In it, Paul clearly differentiates true life that is, life lived in Christ from life lived outside Christ. Without mincing words, he reminds us that we must be heaven-bound where Christ is everything. Each one of us must be heavenly bound. Hence, Paul tells us, Kill everything in you that belongs to only earthly life, fornication, impurity, guilty, guilty passion, evil desires, greed, false gods, and they never tell each other lies. Mm hmm this call to kill everything evil is simply a call to transform our lives. A call to purify our lives. And a call to remain steadfast. A call to remain focused on things heavenly. The gospel today speaks of a primordial spiritual truth. That is to say, the need to detach oneself from the goods of this world. There is a clear distinction between you and your material possessions. And there is no one time 
that we need to be attached to any one of them. Because today you are there, tomorrow you are not there. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to an accident scene. And I want to address men because men are more realistic and greedy at the same time. How are you If men arrive at an accident scene, more often than not, they will start looting, not saving lives, these criminals. Vandalizing the vehicle, removing the, 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 the accessories that people are wearing, their jewelries, their watches, everything, their wallets. And then after that, they will ask, hey, are they dead? After they have stolen. You see, that is telling you something else about our life. You see, the way we are in this church, if you have a lot of money in you, and you die here, you are a Christian. And the people who come to pick you here are also Christians. And you have a lot of money, you can be sure before God and his holy church. That money, you're not good to the money. There is a, there is a mze in this country, in this our beautiful country, who was riding a bicycle, and he had an accident. He fell, and I think he broke his skull, and uh, he went to a coma. Uh, when the people had, you know, they, uh, they rushed there to go and save him, one of his sons came, a son who is permanently high. That family, they have only one investment, only one property of value. And the only property they have of value is that bicycle. And this buggy man, <laughs> this man who is permanently high, <laughs> when he arrived, he first asked everybody, is he dead? And because actually the guy also looked dead, because uh, he was like dead. Then he said, ah, if he's dead, thank God from today, the bicycle is mine. At that point, when the man who was dead heard that the bicycle is going and he was in a coma with a broken skull, he woke up. Papo hapo. Na kuita yesu. Now, the point is, the, 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 the humor in it. This man did not wake up because he had the wife crying. Actually, the wife was crying. He didn't wake up because of the pain he was feeling. The guy woke up <laughs> when he had the son has inherited the bicycle permanently. <laughs> and, and I guess he told God, please God, if I'm coming to you, take a take a bicycle yagu. <laughs> I want to come with my bicycle. You see, that, that, is, that is how uh, what we are saying that, uh, that there, is, there, is, there is the need for us to detach ourselves with the material wealth that we have. This has nothing to do with hatred of this world or of matter or even of the, of the flesh. All that sort of dualism is actually repugnant to the Bible. Everything we are talking about detachment has to do with wearing lightly of this world and its goods. Even as those goods are acknowledged, acknowledged and celebrated. Because at the, end of, at the end of the day, all of us will end up at the same place. The same point. I don't know whether you have ever been so frustrated when you are burying a man or a woman who has a lot of wealth. Those men who have tracts and tracts of land. A lot of land everywhere. 
in this country and beyond. Yet, the grave is the same size. The, the man who had only one old bicycle, his grave, the size of the grave is 36. The man who had half of Kenya as his possession, the same size of the grave. That is how, that is how frustrating attachment to worldly things eventually tells us. You will never see a grave the size of five acres because you are a wealthy man who had a thousand acres of land. And therefore the family have decided to dig a grave that is 25 acres just in case. So if you imagine the size of your grave, you would go home today and sell all the right that, that you have and leave light. Wear light. Some of us do not sleep, scheming how we are going to steal from others. We do not sleep, scheming which plot is not occupied. We sell it. Scheming who is bringing in vehicles from outside the country so that we can intercept and we steal them. Mm-hmm. Some are scheming which account in our banks is dormant. The owner could have died. Where is it? How can we repossess that? You know? Who has some healthy animals? We go steal. And at the end of the day, even if you are to eat, you cannot eat a whole cow. If you steal it and then you are told to eat, you only eat a smaller piece. The rest of it is waste. That is what we are talking about, wearing light ray of this world. For some reason, the desire for more and more seems to be imprinted in our nature for weird reasons. Just like Adam and Eve, we are grasping reaching out for more every day. We are not satisfied with what God has provided for us, but material goods cannot be the purpose of life for a Christian. It can't be. Because now we know that even with all those material goods, we are dying, we have no peace, we cannot sleep, some of us have funny diseases, and we have quite a lot. How many people who are so gifted materially, yet they need a job to sleep or a tablet to sleep? And maybe the condition they have came as a result of what they have. We have so much wealth but we are permanently in hospital. Some of us walk as if we are on a life-saving machine because you, you walk with your, with your watch on setting because maybe you swallow some tabs after every 38 minutes. And are, when, you, when you, have a, you have a schedule that is so, so uh, uncomfortable and distracting such that at some point you need a mida. Somebody can be telling you, oh, it's time to swallow the, the, the tablet. Even when you, where your bedroom is, there must be somebody around there. Otherwise you are going to die. You can't drive alone. When you eat, before you eat, there must be an encyclopedia to do for, for your food because your food is not available anywhere. Only in the encyclopedia and then for it to be cooked, the ancestors must give okay. Allah. That's the life we are leading. You hear people saying that, you know, me, I don't eat, 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 I don't eat, uh, eat in hotels. 
Why? Because uh, I take special food. Special food is a sign of sickness. Not being sophisticated. If you hear a man say that me I must I only eat the food cooked by my wife. Allah. Don't think it is about faithfulness in the vows. To some it could be. To the majority, it is the only the wife who knows. The wife is the only encyclopedia in his life. He knows that the food must be cooked in this quantity. It must be this and this and this. That is why when he says that I can only eat at home where my wife is, you might think, oh God, this man is so nice. Hey, he's so faithful. No. The guy is an ICU material. <laughs> Are we communicating? He is rushing home to eat because his body only takes some special food. He got sick a long time ago because his, his blood started running when he was guarding his properties. And that is why I keep telling young people like you, please don't allow yourself to start taking those tablets that early. If you must take tablets because of health conditions, start taking them at the age of 90. We will know it is because you are sick. You cannot be 35 and you have seven types of drugs that you take every day. Even when you go to the urino, when you get out, the urino is smelling like, like a chemist. <laughs> Everything about you is smelling drugs. Why? Because you have so many conditions. Simply because you can't be at peace. You have a plot in Nanyuki, another one in, another one in Mobasa. There is a bank account that some, some money is being stolen. And you are also planning to steal others. So you are permanently on the race to grab more and more and more. And you never sleep. At some point, the body carves in, caves in. When the body carves in, now we have a problem. You start, you start now sustaining yourself with the medicines, drugs, tablets, everywhere. You are never at peace. Amassing material wealth is not the purpose of the life of a Christian. We can't afford to be in the church worshiping God and we are still amassing properties and we are never at peace. Never ever at peace. Putting energy into wealth, power, and social standing distract us from our Christian mission of serving God and spreading the good news. While material things are not necessarily bad, letting them become gods, our small gods, is actually idolatry. Only the one true God can really bring us lasting peace. Only God. Any happiness derived from these worldly pursuits is actually temporary. The tragedy is, even Christians don't seem to see the point. Don't we have con men and women in church? Don't we have? Don't we have worshippers, thieves of the same overtone that they give? Where's your sadaka? Hawako? Hawanisikirizi? Simulikuja kanisani? Kadibuni wezi? How many of our churches that are being stolen by the same worshippers? The same. The same. The same worshipper. Men and women plotting to steal from their church. Their church. That is how far we have gone with the material wealth. With the material wealth. Material wealth. Material wealth. Material wealth. Material wealth guiding us. And this sickness is for everybody, not even for lay people. Some of us are guilty as charged. We are stealing right, left, and center. Ayesu ni buwana. 
tuko kanisani na tuko sawa wezi wezi wegi wako kanisani wezi wa sadaka wezi wa mashaba wezi wa mifugo wezi wa pesa wezi wa kila kitu in fact we are even stealing people haven't you had husbands who are stolen and the funny thing is only men who are stolen kwani accusations of men have you, have you had people who are called husband thieves <laughs> are husband breads i have always asked maybe i'll ask this to men but i am floating this question hypothetically how comes that men can be stolen or only men hi men na niangalia na macho ya kesho you see we need we need to free ourselves our treasures must be mercy not money love not money kindness not money and charity not money when we pursue these mercy love kindness and charity then we have heard our lord's message and are on the path of a true disciple but we need to ask this question if we finish this homily before answering this question then we'll be in trouble but why do people become obsessed with material possessions is it a curse no is it a weakness i don't think so it's a new choice i think so allow me to share with you some of the reasons why we become so obsessed with material possessions one of the reason is improving our own self image one of the reasons why we are obsessed with material possessions one is improving our own self image we want people to see us from a div- in a different way that is why even some of us have gone to the extent of doing what we call plastic surgery number two, expecting material possessions to boost our social status uh-huh when we think that um, material possessions we will boost our social status then we get attached so that i know when i go somewhere there is a place where some certain types of vehicles are parked or people who live in a certain a uh, neighborhood where they meet that is where even we have exclusive clubs only for some members don't we have in this world and i say this with a lot of knowledge we had do you, if you didn't know we have hotels in this world which cannot be accessed by road so you can imagine that hotel has a certain class so if you only drive whichever type of vehicle that you drive you can't go there that is how we have become socially fragmented because we know that if i have this it is going to boost my social status but don't forget the size of the grave number 3 competition amongst family friends and peers and this is largely with men with men Do you know in this country there are men who bought vehicles not because they needed or they wanted them but because the the friends have vehicles So you have a vehicle that clearly you didn't need The fuel for that vehicle for a month per month is 
Yet, you have rented where you stay. And the rent is 15,000. Fuel, 35,000. You need mental therapy. You are head to be checked what is inside. Could be cockroaches. You have bought a vehicle because your friend bought. You have bought a vehicle because your brother bought. Your brother is in his league. Your friend is in his league. Dear men, don't kill yourself with a life that is not yours. Don't go to take loan so that you can fit in a certain class. Don't take your children to a school where you know you cannot sustain them. Simply because the men in your league, they take their children there. You are not there yet. My dear, take your children where you know you can sustain them. Allah. Some of us are stressing our children because we took them to academies. Because all the women in your chama, are, their kids are in academies. You, the only thing because of your status... The only thing that should be in, in, in the academy is your hope, not your children. Keep your hope alive and work hard. Don't take your kids where every time they are sent home. And why are they there? Because it is prestigious to take my son there. It is prestigious to take my daughter there. And then you ask, does my income allow me or permit me to take my son there. Does my income permit me to live in this kind of neighborhood? That I am paying, I am paying, I am paying rent of 200,000 so that I can fit in. I can fit in. You pay rent 200,000 so that you can fit in. How much would you have used to buy your own property? But because you want to belong to a certain class, that's why you are there. How many of our men and women in churches, in churches, they are in church. How many of them are servicing loans that were completely, completely not desired, completely not necessary? A loan that was taken to fit in a certain class. You know that you are struggling with the school fees. You are struggling with the food. You are struggling with the rent. But, but in the boys' club, everybody is driving. So, you want to fit in the boys' club. At home, no food. School fees in arrears. Rent in arrears. Food in arrears. Love in arrears. Sleep in arrears. The same thug boy buys a vehicle. Was three million. Should be shot dead. Oh, sorry. Uh, you should be prayed for. I didn't say that. Although it's like I have said. You have bought a vehicle three million. School fees, arrears. Your own children. Food at home, ugari na miwa. Yet you are driving. The last time you bought a, 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 something, a dress for your wife, it was last year but one. And it was the church, the church, the church, the church outfit. You see, WA. And it was only 1600 Now, after Queen Unua, Ulimsomea for three months, when you remember idea, you saved her from poverty. Allah, as if you give birth to her. And there you are. You are a man. And this vehicle you are buying is not for work. To show people that you are not a cockroach. My brother, you are a cockroach. Kabisa, kabisa. It is only cockroaches do, that can do what you are doing. Simply because we want to belong. <coughs> competition. Iduni, haina competition. Haina. No competition. Please don't. Number four. Shopping and buying things in a thrill. 
we just want to, to shop, we want to buy because, you know, we have money, you know, we just want to, to buy, we feel good. Number five, thinking that possessions will be what brings happiness. That when you buy these vehicles, you'll be happy. You buy this home, you'll be happy. You do this, you'll be happy. Not remembering that most of the men and the women who have a lot of property are not happy because they are permanently worried. I was giving you an example of a gentleman I found lying at peace. Then I was asking ourselves, how many of us would be able to do that at peace? Maybe we can't because we are worried about our watches, about our expensive rings, about our, about, about our wallets, about our shoes, about everything else. Material wealth acquired for wrong reasons and uh, accumulated for, again, wrong intentions never gives you happiness. Number six, influence of family, mentors, and environment during early years. And the family influences you to own a certain types of property. And this is where our moms and dads come in in terms of mentorship for their sons and daughters. Number seven, coping with or combating the fear of our own mortality. Thinking that if we have this, we will live longer. Human beings have tried everything in this world. But one thing, human beings, even those be what we call top-notch scientists, one thing that nobody has been able to stop is aging. A time is coming when each of us will be dying one after the other without counting what we had. That said, some of us try our hardest to fight this fact. One of the ways we do this is by becoming extremely attached to what we have in this lifetime, thinking that getting attached to them will live long. This includes an attachment to material things. But we need to overcome this. Dear good people, we need to overcome this obsession. We are becoming unhappy for no reason. We are becoming worried for no reason. What do we do to overcome this bad habit? Because if you ask me, I'll call it bad habit. What do we need to do? Number one, we become self-aware of our urges to buying things or live a particular lifestyle. We must be aware. Do I need this item now or it can wait? Dear men and women, don't fit in a certain group where, in reality, you do not fit. If you can afford to live in a house where you can pay 20000 comfortably be there. God is going to elevate you one day where you will not only live in an expensive rented home, but you, be, you have yours, your own. There is... There is blessings in the gradual, um, it's called, we call it the, the, the process. There is blessings in the process. God elevates us in a certain process. We don't go to bed poor, we wake up rich. It never works that way. Number two, explore the real reasons you want a material possession or even status. Is it to gain acceptance? To meet someone else's expectations? Is your sense of worth dependent on it? Why do you need it? For example, I have had many cases of women who have driven their husbands to the edge because she wants a certain lifestyle, because all her girlfriends are in that lifestyle. My dear sisters, if that is not what your husband can, can provide for now, please give him a break. Don't ask your white husband to buy for you a certain vehicle knowing that he has not even finished paying school fees for children. 
and maybe even where your children are, you are the one who said they be taken there. And maybe you are husband for not wanting to have a lot of quarrels with you because you are gifted with a mouth that is on top of the road, on top of the vehicles and the buildings. For, for love of peace, he accepted. Stop allowing yourself to be puppeteered like items. If you cannot afford a certain vehicle, for example, for your, for your wife, tell her you can drive this. A day is coming when God is going to elevate us. You'll buy this. Even if all your girlfriends are driving a certain vehicle, if you can't have one, don't mind. Whoever is close to you, ask them to be coming to pick you. Let them pick you until God picks you himself with the vehicle that he'll give you. If your children cannot fit in a certain school where all your girlfriend's children are, take yours to public schools and tell them what Father C.K. tells students. A great school does not make anybody great. We know of boys and girls taken to great schools ended up with nothing. How many Kenyans do we have today who went to great schools yet they are our greatest, our greatest thieves and others are complete social misfits. They never became great. So don't push yourself where you cannot, I mean, where you do not belong. Please don't. Don't follow a certain class if you can't wait for God. Number three, become aware of unnecessary wastes of money even if you have a lot of it, don't waste. If you can, elevate somebody else's life. Invest in somebody. Number four, consider things you are not using and donate or even sell them. If you have, a, a, for example, uh, for gracious ladies, if you have a dress that you have not worn for two months, you don't need it. Before God, you don't need it. Donate it after Mass today. If you have a shoe, I'm told that women have more shoes and she's still buying more. I, I heard of a, a lady who had a hundred thousand pairs of shoes. I don't know whether it was true or not true, but it sounded true. Now, if you, as the Bible says, if you, in your limited resources, you have 30 pairs of shoes, what about celebrities who must keep a certain class? So if you have a shoe, again you have not worn it for two months, donate it. Please do. Please donate it. You cannot have a, um, a dress in your wardrobe that you have not worn for eight months. That is not riches. That is behaving like this rich man. Get the full use of the possessions you own. Make sure that what you own, it is in full use. If it is not, uh, if it is not put it somewhere that it can be used. Donate your dresses, other items of wearing, Donate your shoes. Donate what you, ca what you are not using. Donate it. Not because it is bad, but because you'd want to bless somebody else with it. Finally, seek out quality both in purchases and in experiences. A qualitative life does not have to be an expensive life. Living well does not mean stealing from others we must ask ourselves, is this what God wants of me? Jesus says that a person's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. No. We might add that it also does not consist of an abundance of accomplishments, applause, or self-indulgence. 
all that we are and have ultimately belongs to God. And as stewards, we will have to give God accounting of the use, full use of our time, our gifts, and our energy. Certainly, we have no idea when the Lord will take a knock of what we have done with our own lives. But it will happen to each one of us. It may be tonight, you never know. Where you stop being called your name, you become a body. Aliekua. Mweda zake. Hauna jina. Aliekua. Mweda zake. Maiti. Body. The remains. To be rich towards God, Christians must learn to think of themselves as laborers in the master's field, rather than private lad owners, answerable to no one. Answerable to no one. Not right. The harvest is Christ's, not ours the moment that reality will sink in our systems, we will be happy and liberated children of God. The harvest is Christ's, not ours. And our Lord calls us to use our resources, the resources at our disposal, to help others and to glorify him. The resources we have, we use them to help others, to become a blessing to others and glorify his name. The moment you spend, you spend your property as a weapon to, uh, to fight others, then you have lost the way. I have heard people say, you know, I have a lot of money. I can make sure that you are locked in and you stay in jail forever. That is not right. That is not how you use your wealth to brutalize others. I have a lot of money. I can pay that you are, here, you, are, you are locked in or you can do this or the other one or the other one. Using your property to bully others. Using your possessions to dehumanize others. That is not the will of God. That is not how Christians do their things. Whatever God has given you, whatever God has given you, use it for his greater glory. Invest in people. Please invest in people. Let them smile because God has blessed you. Let somebody else today be happy that so and so has become a blessing to me. Please do that. Please do. If you know of children you can pay school fees for, please do that. That is better investment than buying a plot. Even you or somebody who needs some food, please buy them some food. Please do that. And I want to request human beings of goodwill, men and women, let us look at the children in the world, the poor in the world, and then we ask, can I do something to make their life better than it is? There is nothing as peace giving. There is nothing as fulfilling as investing in the lives of people who will never help you. Please, whatever we have, let's carry them, let's fold them, we give them out. Let us make somebody smile. Offer some help if you can. Please, if you can. If you can, please do. Ask, can I make a child smile somewhere? There could be a family that has not eaten. Can I buy something? Can I do something for them? Dear good people, we can do quite a lot. Let us remove our focus on the material things and we focus on the giver. Paying attention to the gift 
and forgetting the giver is not what a Christian is called for. No, please. No. Let us drop the obsession. Let us look at our brothers and sisters and then we ask, if Jesus was in my place now, what would he have done? Maybe Jesus would have said, my daughter, pay school fees for this child. My son, buy some food for this your brother. My daughter, help these people to live a dignified human life. When you have 50 pairs of shoes, somebody has none. None. But we are okay. Let us not be okay when somebody else has not eaten. Let us not be okay when somebody's son or daughter cannot go to school because of money. Somebody else is homeless and you have 50 homes. We can do something. I am not saying that you take all your material wealth and give out to everybody because the poor will always be with us, Jesus says. But please, let us do something. Please, please, be a blessing to somebody. Don't start tomorrow. Please start today. Be a blessing. Please be. Please. Thank you. And God bless you.